Holosun, AEMS or AIMS, Advanced Enclosed Microsite. Two MOA dot with a 65 MOA circle around it. Enclosed emitter solar panel. Side loading battery. Shake awake. I hope I have your attention because we're about to get started. I have an upcoming project that I need an optic for, and I wanted to do something just a little bit different. I didn't want to use the same old Romeo 5 uh, that I would normally put on a gun when I build it, you know, just to get it going. I reached out to Holosun and asked them if they would ship me out an AIMS for me to go ahead and use on this upcoming AR build. The people over at Holosun were great. They boxed up this AIMS, they shipped it over to me to go ahead and test out and see what I think. Before I can give it my stamp of approval for whatever that's worth, I've got to test it. And what better way to test an optic than to throw it on the Vepr 12? I know it seems a little bit overkill to throw this little guy on a semi-auto AK pattern shotgun like the Vepr 12. Here's the thing though, I haven't shot the Vepr in probably about three years now. So number one, this gives me a great excuse to get out and knock the cobwebs off of it. The other thing is the Vepr really is a great gun to test optics with. Hear me out here, if you really want to beat the hell out of some sort of optic to see what kind of abuse it is and is not going to put up with, Sure, you can drop it on the cement a bunch of times, but if you don't want to damage it externally and you just want to put the internals to the test, you can put it on something like a shotgun. Run a bunch of double op buck and slugs through it and those heavy doses of recoil are really going to let you know what an optic is made of. If something is going to knock loose on that thing, if the optic is going to lose zero, or if the emitter is going to flutter, stutter, blink or fail, it's going to happen while mounted to the Vepr 12. We're going to go ahead, throw a few mags through it and just see what happens. It's been a while since I've shot this gun, so bear with me here. Whew. I don't know what the hell round that was. That's what's frustrating about an AK pattern shotgun. Sometimes they work, sometimes they're just a piece of shit. <laughs> Typical Vepper shit. The Vepr 12 is really a lot like a classic car. Sometimes it runs really well. Sometimes it takes everything that you have to just keep it going down the road. And sometimes it's just a piece of shit and doesn't want to run. I'd love to send my Vepr off to somebody like Dissident Arms and have them really tune it up and get it running properly. Uh, the problem is, is that I live in the communist state of Washington and they have changed the laws so that now I can't buy parts for it. I can't ship it out of state and have it shipped back to me. I'm basically stuck with it as is for right now. Testing this optic on the Vepr, it was pretty frustrating, not because of the optic, but because of the Vepr. I did manage to run 50 rounds of slugs through it, run about 100 rounds of double op buck, and maybe 25 or 30 rounds of just standard birdshot. Aside from the gun, running like crap basically the entire time. Um, the testing with the optic went really well. I actually expected the emitter to do some, you know, fluttering because let's face it, you know, this thing, it's not exactly made to go on a shotgun. That's not really what it's made for. Surprisingly though, no, it, it ran really good. I didn't have any issues with it. The optic actually performed a hundred times better than my shotgun did. Now that we have the worst case scenario out of the way, we can move on to other guns in the collection. I've ended up running the aims through its paces over a handful of different range trips on a handful of different firearms. Of course, I did start out with that Vepr 12, um, and then I moved on to things like the PSA Jackal, um, the KS-47, and the AKV. You know, come to think of it, I've actually got a lot of guns from PSA in my safe. It's weird. Anyways, I'm happy to report that in every instance the aims kept up with me.
I did a rough zero every time I moved it from one gun to another, and it held zero really well. Now you may think that's not a big deal, right? We expect all red dots, all optics to hold zero. But the thing is, is I started out the testing by beating the hell out of this thing on a shotgun. If the electronic components inside of this thing are going to fail, it's going to be after putting all of those, you know, high recoil rounds through the Vepr. No, the Ames is a solid piece of hardware. You know, they went ahead and made these rubberized buttons up here to manually adjust your brightness of your dot. Um, you know, they're easy to reach, easy to use, easy to manipulate. It does have an auto adjust for brightness as well as manual. Me personally, I just prefer manual adjust on all of my optics. Um, I find that for my eyes, I need something just a little bit brighter than what a auto adjust provides for me. That's not to say that the auto adjust on this or any of my other optics isn't good. It's just that I need a brighter level than what the manufacturer has that auto level set at. In fact, so far I haven't been able to find a single auto adjust optic um, that provides the right brightness for my eyes to see it easily. Luckily, I can just keep it set for manual mode, and if I need to make an adjustment, it's super easy to just reach up and toggle that brightness up or down. Like I said earlier, the Ames does have a solar feature. Um, one of the things that I like about Hollow Sun is that almost all of their optics have a solar panel. Realistically, it's nice to have as a just-in-case type thing. I've never personally ran into a situation where I need that solar panel because with that Shake Awake feature, the batteries on all of my Hollow Sun optics, they just last a long friggin' time. Not only that, but I do change my batteries fairly regularly. The thing is, though, is every once in a while, you're going to buy a brand new battery from whatever manufacturer that just doesn't work very well. You never know what might happen. And because of that, it is really nice having that solar panel backup. I don't know what else to say, really. Like, I can fill up a bunch of airtime talking about the windage and elevation adjustments or the night vision settings. I could mention the packaging or any number of you know technical details about the aims that are available on the website, but that's really not the stuff that matters. That's not the stuff that anybody really wants to watch a YouTube video for. Here's what matters, to me at least. I like this optic. The reticle, it's super easy for me to see. That green is so much easier on my eyes than red is. And it does come in both red and green. You can make your choice, um, but this one is the green model. Shake Awake. It should be an industry standard. And if a optic doesn't have Shake Awake, I don't want to spend my money on it. Ames has it. Actually, I don't know that Holosun has a model that doesn't have Shake Awake. At Shake Awake, it means the battery life on this is really good. And if by some reason the battery does crap out on you, you do have the solar panel as a backup. This thing is tough built. It handled the abuse that I put it through on an AK shotgun. It's also got these clear flip down lens covers. So if you do happen to be a little bit rough with it, if you drop it, if something happens, um, you'll end up scratching this before you scratch the actual lens. Now, I don't know if Holosun actually sells replacements for these things. I didn't see any on their site. It'd be nice if they did. I could have just missed them. I don't know. This optic just screams rugged and tough built. And let me tell you, the more that I use different optics from Holosun, the more impressed I am with them as a whole. So I had a good time testing this Ames on a whole handful of different weapons. The question is, which one was my favorite? Which one just feels like it should be home for this red dot? Well, technically green dot. All in all, out of all of the guns that I tested it on, I think that I like it the best on the PSA Jackal. Don't get me wrong, it's a great optic and it can be used on a very wide assortment of applications. But I really feel like it suits the Jackal. Not only did I feel like I just couldn't miss when I was using the Jackal with the Ames, but the Jackal is like this weird kind of oddball gun. It's an AR, but it's not an AR and it's a little boxy looking. The Ames just feels right on the Jackal. It just looks right on the Jackal. Hell, I'm really tempted to keep it on the Jackal. Let me know in the comments down below, what gun would you put one of these Hollow Sun aims on? Okay, look, let's wrap this thing up. Hollow Sun, advanced enclosed micro sight, or aims for short. It's tough built, it holds zero. Battery life, great. 
Shake Awake, super cool. Side loading battery, solar panel. Pick your reticle, dot, circle, circle dot. The Ames is a few bucks more than I would normally care to spend on a red dot. You guys know me, I'm probably one of the cheapest people alive with most things. I gotta say though, after taking the time to take it to the range and test it on a bunch of different guns, I mean, I can really understand why it costs a little bit more. If you're looking for something that's going to last, something that you can rely on, something that can handle the abuse, well, you may wanna consider the Ames. Okay, that's it for today, guys. I'm out of here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you real soon.